Earlier this week, El Salvador became the first country to make Bitcoin legal tender. Since the announcement was made back in June, there has been no shortage of opinions flying around about what this could mean for the country as well as for the future of the number one cryptocurrency. Some believe that this will end up being nothing more than a failed experiment, whereas others reckon this could be the beginning of a new era of financial freedom powered by public cryptocurrencies. While there's no way of knowing for sure what the future holds, El Salvador's peculiar relationship with Bitcoin, as well as the contents of the legal tender bill itself, offer a few clues as to what comes next. So today I'm going to tell you about the history of El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption, what exactly the legal tender bill says, and why this event is just the beginning of a much larger trend. Whoa, whoa, hold on just a second. There's a disclaimer I need to mention. Financial advice is not something I can provide. Anyone saying I'm a financial advisor in the comment section is telling lies. All I can do is help you learn and get wise. So contact a licensed financial advisor for any financial advice. If you have no memory of my face, my name is Guy, and if you love crypto, you've come to the right place. The Coin Bureau is filled with the kind of high quality crypto content that will give you a thrill. Coins, tokens, news, tutorials, exchanges, and nothing to shill. If this is the sort of stuff that makes your heart skip a beat, subscribe to the channel, ping that notification bell, and hold on to the edge of your seat. What I've got for you today is a real treat, and if you've got places to be, you can use the timestamps below to skip ahead to any interesting topics you see. If you have the time to stay, watching until the end is an especially good idea today. So now that you know what you're in for, let me tell you all about Bitcoin in El Salvador. Once upon a time, El Salvador had its own national currency called the Salvadoran Colón. Now, as is often the case with fiat currencies, the Colón collapsed as a consequence of a black swan event, specifically the Salvadoran Civil War between 1979 and 1992. While the Salvadoran Colón is still technically legal tender in the country, El Salvador has been dependent on the US dollar ever since it became its new national currency in 2001, and colons are no longer in use. Other countries in Central and Latin America have similar stories and are likewise dependent on the US dollar. In contrast to many of its neighbors, however, almost 70% of El Salvador's population remains unbanked, and nearly a quarter of El Salvador's GDP comes from remittance payments, aka money being sent home from abroad by expats. If that wasn't bad enough, El Salvador is one of the poorest countries in Central and Latin America, with an average annual income of under 4,000 US dollars. These harsh economic conditions, combined with unresolved social and political issues, has made El Salvador a less than optimal place to live, and millions of Salvadorans have left the country over the years as a result. The Salvadorans who chose to stay have seen their cost of living increase every year as the US Federal Reserve creates trillions upon trillions of new dollars out of thin air. Meanwhile, the El Salvadoran government is completely at the mercy of the US government, which has a substantial amount of control over the flow of dollars in and out of the country. So El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption makes a lot of sense against this backdrop, and it's something that's actually been years in the making. El Salvador's Bitcoin history begins with an anonymous American who wanted to create a small-scale economy running entirely on Bitcoin. This individual pitched their idea in early 2019 to a Californian surfer named Michael Peterson, who frequented a coastal town in El Salvador called El Zonte. This individual even offered to donate millions of dollars in BTC to the cause if Michael could turn his Bitcoin dream into a reality. Michael accepted the offer and tasked himself with setting up the necessary infrastructure to bring Bitcoin to El Zonte's 3,000 residents. The rollout was predictably slow at first, with many residents being skeptical of Bitcoin and only one store agreeing to accept BTC as payment. In a bid to bolster BTC adoption, El Salvador's first Bitcoin ATM was erected in El Zonte in early 2020 to facilitate crypto-to-cash conversions, but this had little to no effect. 
When the pandemic hit, however, the locals decided to give Bitcoin a shot, especially after Michael announced that some of the donated BTC would be airdropped to families to help them make ends meet. By the end of 2020, over 90% of El Zonte's residents were using BTC on a regular basis. Most of its businesses began accepting BTC and the town got a new nickname, Bitcoin Beach. El Zonte even got its own payment app called the Bitcoin Beach Wallet, which leverages the Lightning Network for fast and low-cost BTC payments. Now, if you've never heard of the Lightning Network before, I strongly recommend you watch my video about it using the link up there in the top right. Anyways, Bitcoin Beach turned a lot of heads in the crypto industry and it inspired some companies to carve out their own crypto niche in the country. One of these companies was Zap, which decided to deploy its Strike app in El Salvador in late March this year after months of testing. Strike is another payment app which leverages Bitcoin's Lightning Network for remittance payments, and it quickly became the most downloaded app in El Salvador. This is simply because regular remittance intermediaries charge minimum fees that can be as high as $50. So when you're sending just $100 at a time, as many Salvadorans abroad are to family back home, that works out to a 50% loss due to fees alone. Zap founder and CEO Jack Mallers explained in an interview that he was sitting in a restaurant watching Strike on the news when he received a DM on Twitter from the brother of Najib Bukele, the president of El Salvador. Najib wanted to meet with Jack immediately to discuss El Salvador's adoption of BTC as legal tender. And after a tense meeting, Jack agreed to help with El Salvador's Bitcoin infrastructure and policy. Jack says that the five weeks which followed were, quote, disorienting for many reasons. For starters, Jack had signed a non-disclosure agreement with the El Salvadoran government, which prevented him from explaining what was going on to anyone save for a handful of people in and around Zap. Jack was also cognizant of the fact that helping the El Salvadoran government with its BTC adoption would make him a target, and he even consulted with various lawyers and PR companies to make sure he would not be immediately sent to prison when the news got out. Not only that, but the decision to reveal El Salvador's new legal tender law at Bitcoin Miami was made at the last minute, with Jack scrambling to explain to event organizers that he needed an extra speaking slot for reasons that he could not reveal in advance. On June the 5th, Jack took to the stage to warm up the audience for what he saw as, quote, the biggest geopolitical announcement in 250 years. As part of Jack's presentation, he played a pre-recorded clip of President Najib Bukele explaining that he would be sending a bill to Congress to make Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador. The crowd cheered and Jack teared up as he read the following excerpt from a working draft of the Bitcoin bill. Quote, Central banks are increasingly taking actions that may cause harm to the economic stability of El Salvador. That in order to mitigate the negative impact from central banks, it becomes necessary to authorize the circulation of a digital currency with a supply that cannot be controlled by any central bank and is only altered in accord with objective and calculable criteria. On June the 8th, Bukele sent the finalized Bitcoin bill to Congress and the next day the bill was passed to become law, with nearly 75% of politicians voting in favor. As a tribute to the message left in the first Bitcoin block by creator Satoshi Nakamoto, a Bitcoin mining pool immortalized this historic moment on the Bitcoin blockchain. The Bitcoin as legal tender law went into effect on September the 7th, 90 days after the passing of the bill as per its prescriptions. So, what exactly does it say? Unlike some other bills we see floating around these days, El Salvador's Bitcoin bill is only three pages long and it's surprisingly straightforward. The first page of the bill basically explains that it's the duty of the El Salvadoran government to, quote, promote and protect private enterprise and facilitate wealth formation for its citizenry. It also explains that El Salvador had opted to adopt the dollar in 2001 for this purpose and seems to subtly imply that this has had the opposite effect. The conclusion is that Bitcoin can fix this, but only if its integration is facilitated and its use is regulated by the government. 
The actions that the El Salvadoran government will take to accomplish these two goals are detailed on the second and third pages of the bill, and there are a few points worth highlighting. First, BTC can be used to pay for all goods, services, taxes, and past, present, and future debts. Second, BTC will not be subject to any capital gains tax. Third, all businesses must accept BTC by law, and if any business does not want to keep BTC on its balance sheet, the government will provide it with, quote, instant convertibility to USD. In the event that a business cannot accept BTC for no fault of its own, it will not be subject to any sanctions. Fourth, the government will provide cryptocurrency training and education for both individuals and institutions. Fifth, the government will provide the necessary infrastructure to facilitate all of the above. And finally, the government will create a special Bitcoin trust, something which happened shortly before the law came into effect. The $150 million in this Bitcoin trust will be used to facilitate BTC-USD convertibility in the country, install government-operated crypto ATMs, and provide the $30 airdrop promised to all adult citizens who download the government's own Bitcoin wallet. Now, though they aren't written into the bill, the government also announced a slew of other pro-crypto provisions after the bill passed in June. One of these was the offer of permanent residency to anyone who invests three BTC in El Salvador. This applies to just about anything, including the purchase of property in the country. Now, on that note, I'll quickly point out that there's no property tax in El Salvador, which means that if you can manage to be self-sufficient, you can basically live completely off the grid. If that wasn't crazy enough, the government is planning on mining BTC using the everlasting heat from the country's numerous volcanoes. As reported by Coindesk, El Salvador's push to become ground zero for crypto has managed to attract some serious players in the industry, especially as other countries consider unreasonable regulations. Not everyone is on board with El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption, though, and the critics crawled out of the woodwork in the days and weeks following the initial announcement in June. First, there was the World Bank, which refused to help El Salvador with its Bitcoin adoption on the grounds that Bitcoin is not sufficiently transparent and that it is bad for the environment. Now, both points are BS, especially the second, and you can find out why by watching my video about Bitcoin mining and climate, up there in the top right. Anyways, then there was the International Monetary Fund, which also said that Bitcoin could be a vehicle for money laundering and terrorist financing. This was just before a branch of the United Nations came out and warned that El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption could do damage to its economy. Around that time, the US Department of State also emphasized that El Salvador should take care in properly regulating Bitcoin and I'm sure it has El Salvador's best interests at heart. America's biggest bank, JP Morgan, also weighed in on the risks of relying on BTC as a form of currency. And we all know how firmly JPM has had its finger on the crypto pulse in recent years. And finally, there was Fitch, which lowered El Salvador's creditworthiness because of its Bitcoin adoption. These comments are not all that surprising or concerning when you remember that every single one of these institutions relies on the dollarized system El Salvador is trying to escape. However, the same counterpoint cannot be levied against the concerns that are apparently coming from El Salvador's own citizenry as per the surveys that have been conducted since the June announcement. There have even been a handful of protests against the move to adopt Bitcoin with one of the most vocal critics of the Bitcoin legal tender law allegedly being unlawfully arrested by Salvadoran authorities. Now, this ties into the bigger trend of the authoritarian tendencies allegedly exhibited by the current administration. As is often the case, the truth about what's going on here seems to be somewhere in the middle. Shortly after El Salvador passed its legal tender law, Peter McCormack of the What Bitcoin Did podcast managed to land an interview with President Najib Bukele, and it was an eye-opener to say the least. Although the interview does not address some of the more recent controversies directly, Bukele saw them coming and provided some surprisingly robust counter-arguments to current and future critics. Besides the fact that El Salvador is seriously suffering due to its reliance on the US dollar, dollar-based banks have had more than 20 years to roll out their infrastructure in the country. 
However, 70% of Salvadorans are still unbanked, and this means dollar-backed institutions have no right to complain or object as far as Bukele is concerned. El Presidente also mentioned that most of the news we're seeing about international criticism is just FUD, and that institutions like the IMF are still supporting El Salvador. Look no further than the Central American Development Bank for evidence of this. It helped El Salvador with its Bitcoin integration after the World Bank turned the country down. The Bank of International Settlements even called El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption an interesting experiment, which is bizarre given that it's the self-described bank of central banks. Now, regarding criticism coming from within the country, Bukele knows that not everyone is happy with the change. But besides the fact that most politicians also voted in favour of the law, El Salvador really doesn't have much to lose by trying something new, for the reasons I mentioned earlier. More importantly, the US dollar will still be legal tender, and those who do not want to use BTC in their daily lives will not have to do so. Even though businesses must accept BTC by law, the government will guarantee instant convertibility to USD as per Article 8 of the Bitcoin bill. In Bukele's eyes, most of the FUD coming from citizens and companies is fundamentally due to a lack of understanding of what Bitcoin is and how it works. He also rightfully pointed out that most of these same critics don't know how the regular financial system works either. Heck, there aren't many people on the planet that do. President Bukele thinks these concerns will all but disappear once people see the practical effects of the Bitcoin bill, notably the inflow of human and financial capital from overseas. As for the volcano-powered Bitcoin mining, President Bukele aims to use those proceeds to build better infrastructure around the country, such as roads and schools, and even put up signs noting that these additions and improvements were built with the proceeds from Bitcoin mining. Now, to be fair, Bukele has every incentive to say these sorts of things, given that his reputation is on the line. Word on the street is that many politicians in El Salvador hold BTC as well, including Bukele himself. And by the street, I mean Bloomberg. Now, happily, there are already a handful of fantastic mini-documentaries about El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption and how successful it's been so far. It turns out that the Lightning Network is a big step up from having no banking infrastructure at all. Shocking, I know. What's amazing is that many of El Salvador's early BTC adopters in El Zonte and elsewhere typically use dollars for their day-to-day -day purchases while stacking sats for their savings. Most of them are also aware of Bitcoin's volatility and know not to get worked up about the day-to-day -day price swings they see. After all, their savings are there for the long term, and we all know how BTC has been doing on that scale. The real benefit in all of this is Salvadorans learning how money works, and widespread financial literacy will be one of the many benefits of El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption. With all that said, though, there are some valid concerns to be had about El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption. Firstly, there's Bitcoin's price volatility. As successful as El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption has been so far, the real test of success will happen in the depths of the next bear market. As I mentioned in my video about some of the upcoming bullish and bearish events and developments in crypto, the crash could come as soon as the end of this month. If I had my tinfoil hat on, I'd tell you that a blow-off top and a massive crash is exactly what dollar-backed institutions would want for El Salvador right now. Salvadorans would FOMO in only to get wrecked, and that would turn any protests into riots. Conspiracies aside, Bitcoin's volatility pales in comparison to an even bigger concern, and that's centralization. Whether it's Strike, Bitcoin Beach, or the government's Chivo Bitcoin wallet, it looks like they are all going to use custodial Lightning Network implementations. In other words, all the BTC being transacted by Salvadorans will not actually be held in their own wallets, but in the wallets of whichever Lightning Network app they are using. This arguably makes El Salvador's Bitcoin setup no different to the current banking system. It's just subbed out one financial intermediary with another. It's also a problem that Strike, El Salvador's Bitcoin payments partner, is headquartered in the United States. This introduces a potentially fatal attack vector for El Salvador's Bitcoin infrastructure, and Decrypt already reported that they may be lacking the licensing required for their current operations. 
all of El Salvador's Bitcoin wallets will also require some sort of KYC, with the government's Chivo wallet requiring facial recognition. Now, if El Salvador's authoritarianism is as substantial as it's been made out to be by anti-crypto interests, this degree of control is extremely dangerous. And even if it's not dangerous today, it will be tomorrow. Luckily, Zap CEO Jack Mallers mentioned that almost all the Bitcoin infrastructure El Salvador is using will be open source. The interoperability properties of the Lightning Network could therefore make it possible to create personalized versions and bypass these sorts of restrictions. This conveniently opens a new can of worms about money laundering and other buzzwords that three-letter organizations are itching to use as an excuse to intervene. Retaliation by foreign governments and institutions is yet another risk to El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption, and I reckon it's reasonable to assume that they're going to do everything they can to stop it. After all, the success of El Salvador's move to adopt BTC would be the beginning of the end for fiat currency, and some would say we're there already. There are literally dozens of countries itching to follow suit, most of which are in Latin America. If we see this happen, BTC's price in USD won't matter because we'll be counting everything in sats. Now, if you're curious about which countries are itching to adopt crypto, you can find my video about that up there in the top right. And that's all I've got for you today, crypto fam. If you enjoyed the video, give that like button a slam. Remember to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell if you're a fan. Until the next video rolls around, here's where I can be found. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Telegram. Subscribing to my weekly newsletter is also a good plan. It's packed with all the tools, tips, and tricks you need to make your gains stick. If you want to look behind the scenes, you need to check out Coin Bureau Clips. If you have some extra cash for an authentic Coin Bureau tee or sweater, even better. You can access these resources and more using the links down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back before you know. Adios, amigos.